I always had like you know something against him for that. Like I was always upset, mm -hmm. and he showed up on my mama doorstep like days before graduation, out the blue with Did my you first time seeing him in like 14 years. Yeah. Oh, okay, damn. I'm like, wow, you know. <laughs> so, uh, wow. Like at first, I was just like standoffish, and then I'm cussing him out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. And, but you know he kind of explained himself in a way and I'm like damn I still have so many questions I got so many unleft you feel me like mm. it's like it was just like I wanted to know more about not even just him but myself too mm, damn Q baby you did that what up what up what up man it's your boy Shy Shy versus everybody podcast voice of Detroit motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker man the champ is here What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shot Shavers, a Bite Podcast, episode 177. Got a special guest in the building. At first, I thought she was kind of like, you know what I'm saying, avoiding, you know what I'm saying, my, my messages, but maybe it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like what it was, like I, I peeped it the first time, but like at the time, it was a lot of people that was like just following me like, hey, yeah, you know, sure. da, 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 da. so I was like, I kind of thought it was a spam, even oh. though I did check out your profile, but hey. I just be kind of like cautious about that type of stuff. You got to, you got to, but yeah. we got a uh, rapper, singer. She addicted to tacos, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a Yak Town, you know what I'm saying? Young legend, uh, Young Pistol Grip, you know what I'm saying? You, she go by that name too. But we got uh, Lyric Bell in the building. What's going on? What's up? What's up? Now, Lyric Bell, aka LB. For sure. Now, why did that, that dude give you that, that name, Pistol Grip? Oh man, uh, it's, it's a whole story behind it. So don't hey, don't incriminate yourself. No, so my mom she got a food truck out in Pontiac. Shout out to Renee Size and Sweets. Um, and you know, I'll help her out a lot up there, whether it's taking orders or, mm -hmm. you know, going to get stuff that she might need. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that always help her out as far as like what hefty lift hefty I mean, heavy lifting that she might need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was <laughs> it was a certain altercation that had happened and they was like getting real hype with my mom. Yeah. And he just saw the look in my face and I'm standing there like just ready for whatever. Like yeah. he just know how I get down sure. because of that. So he been yeah. calling me pistol grip ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, young pistol grip. I'm like, you know, I was doing my little digging like pistol grip. <laughs> Let me ask, let me, I don't know if I should even ask that question. I don't no, know I'm glad you did. I was waiting on somebody, too. That's hilarious. Yeah, you know, when you're on the podcast, people do their homework. You know, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we start off every episode with a salute me while I'm here. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we give them their flowers. But it can't be an easy answer. It can't be moms, pops. It can't be... I know you ain't got no kids. No. Yeah, it can't be kids or it can't be, you know saying, if you're in a relationship. It got to be somebody out of that easy uh, answer. So you got somebody you want to show some love to? Absolutely. Um, first person that comes to mind is Iman. Iman Calhoun. Mm -hmm. He's also an artist. He's from Delaware. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never, to this day, I've never met him in person before. And For he sure. has showed mad love. And Aye. I've been knowing him over the internet since 2015. Aye. And he up. has not let up. So big shout out to him. Wait, when y'all gonna meet up one day? <laughs> soon. I don't know soon. It's definitely coming soon. Yeah. How did that connection even, you know what I'm saying, come about? Uh, Instagram, okay. the Explore page. He mm -hmm. said he came across me on the Explore page and he was like, yo, she dope. And, you know, I tapped into him. I'm like, okay, he cool. You feel me? And mm -hmm. we just been supporting each other ever since. For sure. That's what's up. That's what's up. My, um, my salute, I ain't got nobody, but I'm going to salute a certain, a certain person or a certain people. People who really buy their kids Halloween costumes. Because <laughs> <laughs> this would be, this would be airing on uh, Halloween on Tuesday. So yeah, because you know, what I'm saying it's important to have a good costume, man. Because growing up as a younger younger kid, my mom used to always like, oh, I ain't got no money, so I was a bum every year. You know, what I'm saying get some raggedy clothes, put some holes in them and stuff. Like, all right, I'm a bum. I never got that good. You know, what I'm saying Batman, Superman. You know, what I'm saying yeah. everybody had the good costumes. I was in that mud looking like a bum and shit. So salute to the parents that was really supporting their kids and giving them some Halloween costumes. Yeah. <laughs> Speak of Halloween, give me your worst Halloween candy. Like, what's the worst shit that you could pass out to a kid? The worst? Mm hmm. Mm. I don't know. Don't. I don't know, because I ain't been trick or treating in some years. You feel <laughs> like, me? Don't give but... me that orange and that. What's that shit? It, it wasn't even a name on there. It was just orange and black rappers. And then the candy corn was trash. <laughs> Candy corn. I trash. actually like candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> I rock with candy corn. Or hey. peeps. Like you don't know peeps and peeps. Oh yeah, that's trifling. Yeah. That's like, just like that shouldn't even be sold in the stores. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 um, I don't want no um uh butterfingers. I'm good. 
What? But I think it's just cool. But I ain't gonna lie, for some reason around Halloween they be giving you the real stale ones. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so you ain't got no candy, you just gonna like, hell no, I'm throwing this shit out the out the bag in the garbage. Yeah. I would have to say I I, I forgot what it's called, but it's like in a red I think it's like in a red wrapper, something 100 grand. 100 grand? 100 grand, yeah. Oh, hold on, I used to, I used to rock with the 100 grand. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't get jiggy with it. I can't believe y'all eat candy corn. Oh, my God. <laughs> that shit shouldn't even be made. To each its own, it's soft, it's chewy. Oh, hell no. Nah. Shout Sweet, out to y'all. Sweet, a little creamy. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to y'all. Now, you uh talked about your mom having a food truck. Are, do you help cook? She's the only one that handles the food, mm -hmm. and she will tell you that proudly. Mm -hmm. But as far as like, just like little stuff that she might not be able to like get around to like whether it be like helping with customers or you know cuffing up the sauces or yeah. you know stuff like that hey run to, uh run to the store real quick i ran out of to-go containers you For know sure. what i'm saying yeah, you yeah, know yeah, stuff yeah. like that okay 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 shout out to mom and her food truck man yeah now it's a uh, you know it's the end of 2023 this year my fast as hell but uh talk about your year you know what I'm saying of course we're gonna get on the project you know what I'm saying that you just dropped later on but just talk about your year and um ups and downs and just how uh 2023 been for you 2023 has been a roller coaster mm -hmm. um emotionally you know physically it's been any it's been a roller coaster mm -hmm. like starting off the year it felt it felt real stagnant okay. like you know what i mean like yeah. it was just it just felt like dang where my motion at even though like slow motion better than no motion for i sure. still was just like something got to like shake but you know when spring come around it's always like you just like extra motivated because yeah. that sun out yep, out sure. you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. um i don't there's nothing like too crazy that like really went down mm. i just know like this year this year was actually my golden year okay and i say that because i turned 23 on the 23rd in 2023 okay so that yeah. was like this whole year i was just like whatever you do make sure it's important make sure you know, this is going to propel you for your mm -hmm. future, like whatever. So I just started moving like really strategically with everything that I started doing. Hey, 23. Because yeah, your birthday April 23rd, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do my man. I do my little stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dang, 23. That was a good, that was some good times. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'm, 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 I'm an old dude now. My son about to be 17. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shout out to all youngins. Y'all you know, got like a long life ahead, y'all. <laughs> What's something you learned about yourself, though? You didn't know you was maybe capable of doing or... Oh. Some, you know what I'm saying? Something that you need to work on? Um, Being more feminine, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, like, really, really big for me mm -hmm. this year. Like, just stepping into that feminine, like, softer side. Because mm -hmm. um, I always had to be, like... The life. You feel me? Straight <laughs> yeah, like, up. Hey, young I pistol grip. You know okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> that ain't never going nowhere. But it was just, like, I never really knew how to how to properly like walk in that feminine you yeah. know energy yeah. and it, it was difficult like anytime somebody like i ain't never seen you in a dress and i'm like tuh yeah. you know what i mean it's just like why do you want to like yeah, you know what i mean sure. like you always see me like sweats baggy clothes t-shirts you feel me yeah. that's still not going nowhere but i just i had to find that balance so that was yeah. like real big for me to do yeah. you know what i mean what made you want to go ahead and switch it up though like you know what i'm saying because you know i think it's just because like as I'm just, as I'm getting older, it's like, all right, you can't be dressed like this all the time. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, like I said, moving strategically, it's like, especially with business or in the music in general, like mm -hmm. I wanted people to start taking me more serious. For sure. yeah, yeah, and yeah. sometimes it might be hard to take somebody seriously if they always wear sweatpants and a hoodie. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Just like how you present yourself, how you carry yourself. Yeah, that's so that, I started to think about that. That's that fight gear. You you, you like a scrapper, like, <laughs> <laughs> like you would go ahead and throw hands real quick. Paquito. Yeah. How you, how you, how you, you got temper? You get mad like i'm temperamental cool. like i'm really i'm really slow to anger mm -hmm. but it's like once i get there it's really hard for me to calm for sure. down for sure yeah 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 see i had to work on that as i got older because in relationships <clears throat> i was a wall puncher you know <laughs> you know because when, when, we, <laughs> when we my my you know ex you know relationships and stuff like that you know we got into it of course i can't hear a lady i'm not gonna ever do that I get frustrated sometimes, like, ah, oh, fuck, and just hit the wall. <laughs> now my hand bleeding and just mm -hmm. like, like, man, relationships that have you going crazy. No, seriously. Talk about it, like. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie. I put what? a few a few holes in the wall myself. <laughs> like, I really just wanted to, like, strangle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't know. Like, that, that whole relationship in general was toxic. And yeah. I felt like if you make me get to that point, I don't need to be with you. Because mm -hmm. why am I putting holes in the wall? Exactly. Why are you bringing out my ugly side? Exactly. exactly. That's not cool. It's one thing to see it, but to bring it out of me is, like, mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud of myself on that, too. Because now, like, me and my wife get to it. I just, like, first of all, we ain't going to argue that much. Because you're going to argue by yourself. 
Cause I'm like, <laughs> I'm not even going. I'm, that's gonna make you mad even more than me yelling. Like me just not saying that. Like a word. Mm -hmm. Damn. That's how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just gonna chill. Cause and n niggas be down off of stress. You know, my mom passed away from stress and being mad and shit like that. So mm -hmm. what's the point of me doing that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely. How long did that relationship last? That toxic relationship? Two years. Two years. Two years too long. <laughs> I was about to say, do you ever think about going back? But no. Hell no. <laughs> I would. I, hell will freeze over before I go back yeah. to something. What's your like advice that? to like you know what I'm saying young men, young women? You know what I'm saying that's in relationships and stuff, and they going through that type of stuff, but they think that that's love and that's the way shit supposed to be. And oh, they argue, they mad, they care about me. My biggest advice would be, and simply because like I had to learn it for myself, is to find yourself, mm -hmm. love yourself, mm -hmm. because if you don't, you will constantly allow other people to hurt you or run over you in ways mm -hmm. that you might, you know, think is love, but it's not. And the only sure. reason I say it is because like. In that relationship is actually crazy. In that relationship, like in the beginning phase, I actually married myself. Okay. Believe it or not, because yeah. like at the time, like I started to become like aware of the fact that like I wasn't loving myself. I didn't know really how to, mm -hmm. but I knew that it it needed to happen. Yeah, for sure. So, um, ended up marrying myself, and you know how like in those movies where, um. Like, say, like, a married couple that's been together for, like, years and, you know, they, like, going through a real bad and they get to, like, contemplating and looking at their ring, like, well, I'm going to take it off. <laughs> so, you know, whenever we got into a real bad and I'm putting holes in the wall, yeah. I would literally, like, look in my ring, like, bro, that's not loving yourself. For sure. No you know effect. what I'm saying? Like, if you really loved yourself, you wouldn't allow yourself to go through this. Yeah. So, um, you know, at, at some point, I love myself enough to leave. And ever since then, it's just been, like, a real strong self-love journey. Because yeah. it's like, if I don't love myself properly yeah. or how I expect somebody else to do exactly, it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you pretty wise for your age. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 23, I wasn't talking like that. <laughs> for real, do you ever think about relationships now? Like, you know what I'm saying? Some people don't know how to how to be single, how to be by yourself, you know what I'm saying? They need someone in their life. Like, do you think about relationships now or are you like, it come when it come? It come when it come. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I've been, because I got into one more relationship after that, but it just wasn't, it wasn't it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And for the past two years, it's just been like, you either got to come, you got to like love me how I love me mm -hmm. plus more or you got to go. And then yeah. like right now, I'm really just so focused on like yeah. everything else, for like sure. even outside my music, like I'm really focused. So it's just like, mm. and then it's just, like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of scared. Yeah. You feel me? No, but sure. at the same time, I enjoy the solitude. Like, yeah. the, like the people that don't know how to be by themselves, mm -hmm. they scare me. Because why are you so codependent on having somebody like, even if it's friends, you know, that ain't good for you, a relationship that's not good for you. Like, people are so codependent. And I, I really just cannot. Like, no. I enjoy time by myself. I take myself out to eat. I take myself shopping. I take myself on dates. I spend time, quality time with myself, mm. getting to know myself. The good parts, the bad parts, all of that. Yeah. And I feel like if somebody else can't, like, really match that, it's just mm. like, mm, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I be yeah. wish I could get the house to myself sometimes. <laughs> I like, damn, I'm going to get rid of these kids. Like, man, I want to chill by myself. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'll be trying to sneak out, go to the backyard and shit. Like, fuck it. Yeah. Man, that too. It's important. <laughs> even no, just a little sure. bit. Hell yeah, no, for sure. You, you definitely... Even in relationships, you definitely need time for yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to go crazy mm -hmm. on the people in your house. You know what I'm saying? If that's your kids, if that's your girl, your, your man's, whatever. You're going to trip out because you ain't got that time to just be alone. Because when you're alone, you're going to miss. All right, all right I, this is why I miss you. I need. I was by myself. Now I'm here. You know what I'm saying? That's just going to make the relationship even better. Exactly. For real, shout out to everybody in relationships. Healthy relationships. That part. <laughs> no toxic. No toxic shit. Now, um, you know, everybody, you know, mental, you know, say awareness, health awareness is, you know, strong right now. When things is getting kind of dark for you and get messed up, like who can you talk to and what do you do, like to kind of like get back on track? I talk to God yeah, for sure, truthfully. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you know, I got a sister from another mister, shout out to Rara. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but even she be going through her own thing, like, you know, sometimes we can't be there for each other because we're trying to be there for ourselves right now and mm -hmm. so i talk to myself i journal i talk to god like i lit, I, I talk out loud like like what's going on guide me help me direct me something like show me mm -hmm. and i i'm real big on that like that's why i'm so okay with being in my solitude because i know i'm not really alone mm -hmm. you feel me like it's it's a higher being out mm -hmm. there yeah and i've I strongly believe in that. So that's what I do. I just, I talk to God. Sometimes I go into hermit mode. Mm -hmm. I might close off from the world for a second, 
you know, kind of reflect, do what I got to do, but it's it's necessary. Mm, no, for sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Because uh, you ever thought about, like, how you feel about therapy? Therapy? Um, I don't really know. I've... I've been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, and me too. I, just I because, in, like, for real. yeah, like, I've been thinking about it because I've been seeing, like, a lot more, you know, especially black people, you know, mm -hmm. starting to go to therapy and, you know, they saying, like, it actually helps and them a lot. Me personally, mm -hmm. I was always, like, even growing up, I always felt like I didn't really have nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why would I go tell a stranger my business yeah, and my sure, feelings? Yeah. They might put me in a psych ward. You feel me? Like, <laughs> yeah, you think like that? Hold on. Let me make a call real quick. Like, damn. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't know. I always was just like, I just didn't. I'm like, I don't know. How can I? Should? But at the same time, sometimes talking to a stranger might just be what you need. Like, no, sure. you might come across somebody, you know, um, at the gas station mm -hmm. and you ain't trying to really hear what they got to say, but they might say some real true shit. No, like, for sure. You for know? sure. Because then you talk, talk to people in your family. Sometimes they're going to give you the answer that they feel that you want to hear yeah. and not the answer that you need to hear. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you need that outside ear. But I've been thinking about that junk a little bit, too, because, you know, everybody deal with stuff and don't really know. Until you really talk to somebody like, damn, I'm, I'm fucked up. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say fucked up, but you know, you got some shit going on, some issues or whatever. Yeah. And sometimes I guess talk to somebody probably will, you know what I'm saying, help out. So I've been thinking about it. I don't know. I've been saying that for a couple of years now, but yeah, you know. Like I've come across strangers, like complete strangers that'll sit there and tell me like half of their life story. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm in my head like, man, they talk to my head. But at the end of they it, they be like, right. I really needed yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. And the fact that they felt safe enough and comfortable with me being a stranger mm -hmm. lets me know, like, damn, they needed that. Yeah, like, yeah. everybody need that. You got that welcoming look, though, like, come here, let me talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't bite. Unless you're on some BS. Like. <laughs> no, for sure. That's when grip come out. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Now, uh, is it something that you still think you need to work on just to maybe bury yourself as a as a person, as an artist, like, is it still some things that you that you battle with that you need to improve on? Mm. Um. The only thing I can say is like vulnerability, mm -hmm. which is like I've been actively working on it. Mm -hmm. As far as like you know, finally like putting out the music that I was always too afraid to show people mm -hmm. or like let people hear, yeah. and not even just that because like I do poetry too, like. Um, it's, everything really started off with the poetry mm. and the poetry is like the, it cut deep, For you sure. know what I mean? Like it's deeper than rap. And I was always scared. Cause it's just like, this is the rawest of me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I've been like working on it, you know, here and there. And like, I do notice like, I'm comfortable with like singing and rapping in front of people. But mm -hmm. then it's just like, when it comes to like no instrumental, mm -hmm. no nothing mm -hmm. where it's just me. Like I still be kind of scared. I'd be kind of yeah. nervous and I'd be like, yeah. all right, <laughs> but you got to do it. <laughs> For sure. Hell yeah. Man. Cause that's how I, um, that's how I found out about you. You was on a, what was that? Sound off Sundays. Mm -hmm. And I was going through watching the lineup. I'm like, Oh no, this is the dopest person that was on the lineup right here. And that's why I sent you the DM and you thought I was spamming and stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then I'm like, let me go ahead and, reach out again because I saw you had the project like it only made sense for me to, you know saying have you back on whatever well have you on so I'm glad you uh you know saying responded <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm glad you reached out again because the first time I was like oh and then I looked back I was like damn he probably thought I was just like on some other shit but you know I was just being cautious no it's all good you got to you got to you got to for real for real now um What's your day-to-day -day life away from music? Like, how do you, you know what I'm saying, enjoy yourself? Away from music? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Usually, like, it's fall right now, but usually mm -hmm. you can find me outside with my feet in the grass. Mm -hmm. I'm at the park doing yoga. For sure. You feel me? Like, trying to kick it with my peoples. Mm -hmm. I want to eat good. You know what I'm saying? Laugh and just, like, vibe out to music. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, the simple stuff, for, for real. Sure. Like, the stuff that money can't buy is mm -hmm. what I'm really bad going. Speaking of music, what, uh... How, how was your, your introduction to music? I know, rapping wise, your your introduction was you uh you know what I'm saying battling your brother, talking shit about him. That's how you got your first rap and shit. Yeah. yeah was oh like my goodness. Thirteen years old, whatever. Yeah, it was around there. <laughs> I didn't even know I could rap. It yeah. was just like Came I mean out. I've always been a writer, but like it started off really as a joke. Like we was just blazing each other. Yeah, we were going back sure. at it. You look like da da da. And then what I said ended up rhyming and I kept going. And he was like, hey, yo, that was fire. That was dope. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you right. Oh. So <laughs> we both lost it. And, you know, that kind of just took off from there. But like beforehand, like, I just was always writing. Yeah, who was, uh, who was artists that you, look, that you looked up to like before, you know what I'm saying? Before you had your own ear for music and you were just liking what your mom or what your, you know what I'm saying, people around you was playing. Who was those artists that you was like, damn, they, they dope? Alicia Keys. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was Alicia Keys. She always had... It was her and that piano, man. Like, it was something about them strings. Alicia Keys was definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's the like the first person I could really think of. Mm. Um, yeah. And when you got your own ear for music, who was the people you you was rocking with? Like, like you like all right, bet this. I'm listening to what my people listen to, but now I got my own ear. This is um, who I like. Mm, I would have to say because I listen to so many different types of music. Mm. Um, I don't know if y'all are like familiar with like rock music at all, but Evanescence was like okay. one of my biggest like inspirations because mm. she was like her voice was so angelic but powerful at the mm. same time, but she was so vulnerable, like she was so deep, like you know anything that was like close to like vulnerable like mm. even though I, I kept that music to myself you yeah, feel me yeah. like i ain't really let people know i used to listen to that stuff and stuff. <laughs> now i don't really care but yeah. um i don't know i just like how she cut deep mm. and um over time like i started to accumulate like a lot of more artists but honestly truth be told i don't listen to nobody as much as i listen to myself okay okay because it was it was always hard to like you know people be like oh if you could compare yourself to any artist i'm like i don't do that yeah, like sure. I, I really don't like mm -hmm. i listen to my shit over and over and over and, and try to compare like all right what can i do to make it better no for sure all right for how sure. do i want to sound like i don't want to sound like nobody else yeah. you feel me yeah, yeah yeah but left eye as well left eye left eye like i mean you could say tlc but left eye was like really like the mm -hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But I, and I think those make the best artists. Like, go back to what you said as far as listening to rock music. Like, and the, my last guest who was on here, when you listen to more than just rap, you know what I'm saying, R&B, like, if you can go ahead and go farther into that, it make the better artists because yeah. you ain't just, you you real wound it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people just listen to one type of music and they rap that same type of way. But when you listen to everything, you, you kind of like touch on different stuff and not just, you know what I'm saying, be the same be be on the same shit that everybody else on yeah you know what i'm saying because right that. now the, the detroit wave is is popping but everybody sound the same you know what i'm saying and i know you from pontiac you like the what third or fourth person that came here from pontiac like how is the music scene there um i'm not gonna lie we got a lot of jams out in pontiac mm -hmm. like for real like you know once i really started paying attention and you know seeing people live really tuning in to their music and stuff like that like people sound different like mm. you got some pontiac artists that want to sound like a detroit yeah, artist sure, but yeah. <laughs> you know that's just because they probably not really doing it out of like passion mm -hmm. but i don't know but like every, everybody got like their own swag they got their own sound and i admire that because it's yeah. just like it's so original. Like yeah. you can't go to New York or Cali and hear something like sure. that. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it's real original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay I stay in Pontiac for a summer, for maybe a summer and a little bit of fall. Cause my wife at the time was living out there, so I just crashed at her crib. <laughs> I'm like, it's a little different. Like, it's right next to each other. With, yeah. With, hey, Detroit Pontiac, like you could tell the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, I'm like, it's, I, I fuck him out of town. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm right down the street though. So, yeah, yeah. Like, Shout out to neighbors. Pontiac. We were saying, no, what? What, what street was that? University. So you come oh, on yeah. 75? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I'm like, I just stayed in the house and jump. We wasn't <laughs> even doing that for real, for real. Now, stay on music. If you had to introduce yourself to the world and couldn't use words, you're going to use a song or an album. What, best, what, what song or album would best describe you? Mm. That is a really good question. I try. Um, I try. I really do. <laughs> I really, really do. Dang, that's a good question. Um... You don't go in another podcast like they wasn't asking questions like he was. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> um, dang. Um, introduce myself as an artist, like all in one. Yeah, like you're just gonna That's just song. gonna tell me exactly who you are. It could be your own song. It could be somebody else. It could be a like I said, it could be a whole project. You know, what I'm saying that reflects you. It's something that, that that's gonna be like, all right, bet that's who you are. Okay, I feel you. Dang, <laughs> I am stuck on this one. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a question. A lot of people get stuck. I'm gonna start uh, sending this as a you know what I'm saying question beforehand. Dang. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know, cause like my my style is so versatile. Mm -hmm. You feel me, mm -hmm. like. It can go each and every which way. Mm -hmm. It's it's harder like really put it into a box, yeah. but um. <laughs> mm. I don't him. know. I really we don't know. <laughs> we gotta circle back on that yeah, one. We go. We, we circle back around. <laughs> you know, that, that's one of them questions. Cause everybody be like, "Dog, I don't know what the fuck." Like, cause I, I, I always say with me, I don't know if you listen to DMS, but mine was DMS slipping. Mm. Cause yeah, he say I'm slipping, I'm falling, but you know, saying you gotta get up, get back on my feet so I can tear shit up. Cause you're like, "Damn, I'm down, but how oh, I gotta get this shit back right? I gotta get back moving." So. 
we come back around to it. <laughs> I would have to say, like, it, it, I'm not trying to be biased, but it would have to be one of my own songs. No, go ahead. Told, what, what song would um, that be? That would be Notice Me, mm-hmm. honestly. Like, you know, growing up, like, I was always, like, really shy, really reserved, you mm-hmm. know, kept everything to myself. And, like, you know, in the song, I just, like, you know, if I'm quiet and I'm down and out, will anybody notice? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like... They, they do, and I know that they do, but mm. sometimes I still just feel like I'm unseen. So it's just like sure. that constant going back and forth of like, For sure. all right, I know, but then it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, we don't, we don't never rush to the music. Like I said, I, w- I want the people to get to know you and who you are. So that's why I ask these questions. But what's what's the first adult decision you made? Like, adult damn, decision? Like, damn, this, like life is getting real. I'm not in high school no more. I'm not. I would have to say it was like literally right after I graduated mm-hmm. high school and I ended up moving to Kansas City, Missouri. I was going to ask about that too. Yeah. Like, yeah what, that, was that for school or that, what was that Not, for? Um, really because like my dad, some of my dad's side of the family is out there mm-hmm. and you know, growing up, he wasn't really like around or in my life mm-hmm. or anything like that. And you know, I always had like, you know, something against him for that. Like I was always upset mm-hmm. and he showed up on my doorstep like days before graduation out the blue with Did my sister like, in like 14 years. Yeah. Oh, okay, dang. I'm like, wow. You know, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, wow. Like at first I was just like standoffish and then I'm cussing him out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, but you know, he kind of explained himself in a way and I'm like, damn, I still have so many questions. I got so many unleft. You feel me? Like mm. it's like, it was just like, I wanted to know more about not even just him but myself too and it was mm. just like all right i grew up around my mom i know where i get x y and z from sure. but there's know. so many yeah. parts of me i don't understand because i wasn't around you or that side of the family mm. so i went out there to you know try to get to know him more you know be around him more and ended up like it was a whole self-discovery yeah. type of deal really how was it when you got down there like how was it how was that side of family how was it being around your pops and how was Kansas City? Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't meet too many people who, who stay in Kansas City, Missouri. You know what I'm saying? Kansas City is beautiful. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was beautiful. Um, the the whole, like, situation of me living there and living with my pops and stuff like that. It mm. was uh, rather difficult. Mm. It was a very, like, sudden, like, change. It was like a big tower moment. And I'm like, mm. dang, like... I thought I came down here thinking one thing and it was like something completely <laughs> sure. different, yeah, you know, it was not at all what you would think it would be, but it was, it was, it was rough. I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie. It was rough. But in the end of it all, it was just like, I learned a lot. Yeah. You feel you like feel you me? needed it. Yeah. For sure. How long was you down there? Um, at first I was down there for about three months. Mm-hmm. I ended up coming back considering the circumstances mm-hmm. and then I ended up going back and was out there for like a year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you feel like with him not being around, you know, saying your younger years, do you feel like his role or, or just him not being there kind of like maybe cause some issues or problems with you growing up maybe, or you think like him being around would have made things better, easier, worse? Like, do you ever think about those moments? Like, okay, if he was here, this would have been like this or. This would be like that. I do think about that, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like the biggest impact it had on me was to be independent. Mm-hmm. Like, not even with just him not being there, but it's just like, you know, my mom is a single mother of three. Mm-hmm. And so I always watch her. It's just like, all right, I got to do it myself. I got to do it myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then with him not being there, it's like, when you only got one parent, it's just like, it's not like I can hit you up and be like, hey, can you? For sure. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was just like a... It really taught me how to be, like, super independent, Mm -hmm. you know, in ways that might be unhealthy. Like, being independent is healthy to an extent, Mm -hmm. but it's just, like, when you, like, are, like, overly independent, it can be... You can hurt yourself in the process. But, you know, while living there with him at the time, you know, and coming back from that, it also made me think, like, damn, like, maybe I was better off. No, for sure, for sure. And now I'm I'm, I'm putting everything together, like, you saying, like, loving yourself... A toxic relationship. Do you think those things came from not having him around? Cause you know, a lot of times when you know people grow up, you know, without without you know a certain you know family member, you know, parent or mom or dad, you know, what I'm saying like they look for that person within somebody else, and it just kind of like be fucked up because you know, what I'm saying you just you know you looking for that emptiness, that that space that was you know, what I'm saying left voided. I will definitely, I can definitely agree to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely felt like because of his absence, it made me look for love in the wrong places. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just because I wanted that type of like comfort, I wanted that type of like safety net, mm-hmm. but it was 
that wasn't safe at all. For sure. You know? Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Hell yeah, man. Shout out to everybody. We love you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring some love back here, too, when things get a little sad. But <laughs> we'll stay no sad. This will be my last sad question. Okay. When the last time you cried, what was the reason? And, and it can't be nothing to do with uh, death. Because, of course, you know, death can always bring tears. Um, The last time I really cried was when... Me and my mom had like a, a sit down and mm-hmm. this was like kind of recent. You know, we had like a real sit down because we didn't, me and her didn't always have the best relationship. Mm-hmm. I love her. I love her to death. But, sure. you know, we don't always have the best relationship. It was always kind of difficult. But, mm-hmm. you know, you know, I'm getting older and she's getting older. And, you know, we just it was like an honesty hour. Mm-hmm. And it just it really broke me down because it's just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, sure, like, sure. damn, I needed that, but yeah. it, you know, it it brought us closer. Mm-hmm. It really did. No, for sure. Sometimes that unco- that honest conversation, that you know, what I'm saying that real talk, you need that. No matter if somebody might get hurt by something that's said, but you need that conversation for real. Yeah, I would tell my wife that because I, I ain't gonna put her. She don't watch the podcast anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> I know sometimes she be having like things that she really want to, you know, what I'm saying talk to her mom about. And my producer, who who my uncle, we both kind of like sometimes you gotta just you gotta say it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You might hurt the person's feelings for a little bit, but they need to know how you really feel yeah. about the whole situation. Because if you keep it in, I'm not going to would, but you know what I'm saying? Death come around, you're like, damn, I wish I would have said this. You feel me? That's how I feel now. Like, yep. hey, you going to get these words, though. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to start telling people you love them more a little bit, too. That's something that I'm working on with myself, you know what I'm saying? Because as a man, me and my brother be on the phone. He be like, I love you. I always got to say, yeah, I love you too, nigga. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I got to still stay strong, you gotta too. You throw a little aggression on <laughs> there. Sure. Tough love. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, you growing up, Pontiac, you kind of, you know what I'm saying, touched on it, you know what I'm saying? Pops not being around. You rapping at 14 and stuff like that. Like, just talk about who was in the house and just like, you know what I'm saying, school and how was you as a, you know, was you an athlete, stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Growing up, it was like, um, really just me, my mom, my brother, and a little bit of my older sister too but you know it's like an age gap like mm-hmm. me and her eight years apart so like by the time i'm eight she's 16 yeah, i already sure. doing her own thing she yeah. moved out in college by 17 yep. you know so after that it was like really just me my mom and my brother mm-hmm. and um like me and him was real close like that was my first best friend mm-hmm. you know and school i was like I don't know. Like, I wasn't really athletic for real. I was mm-hmm. more so into, like, theater and arts and stuff okay. like that. You know, as much as possible. Being in choir, of course. Yeah. Um, Are you using choir? Yeah. Okay, that's what's up. Definitely. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like, it was just... I don't know, because I went to a lot of different schools. Like, Who, you getting kicked out? Nah, oh. I moved around a lot. Oh, shit, I know that, man. I probably yeah. had about... I, I think I had about... <laughs> before I moved out my own, I probably had, like, 20 different addresses. <laughs> Like, for real, like, for real. Every time the rent was due, like, all right, we moving. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, for real, I stay, we stay somewhere, everywhere. So y'all was moving mm-hmm. around a lot like that? Yeah. And it was always in Pontiac? Not always in Pontiac. Okay. Um, Not always. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's junk, man. Life be, boy, when you, when you look back on it, you appreciate those struggles. All those things, those difficult times, because it helped you out when you, you know what I'm saying, in the long run. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, just from, like, even whether it was, like, moving in state to state or, mm-hmm. you know, city to city, like, whatever the case might have been, I learned at a very young age, like, not to get so attached to people mm-hmm. or things because it was going to be temporary anyway. Man. So it was, like, at first I used to hate it because it was just like, dang, like, every time I get comfortable, we got to <laughs> move again. Like, dang, I just made my first friend at school and I we got to move. You feel me? So I learned, like, not to get too attached. Like, yeah, we could be cool, but, you know, this ain't, you know, forever. Yeah. So, you know, I'm cool in it for now. But in the same sense, I feel like it helped with, like, now because it's just like, you know, well, what I want to do with music. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be traveling all the time. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be pretty much living life on the road. which sure. is, You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. it helped because now it's just like, all right, I'm, I'm prepped. Yeah, once you do it, make sure you come back, though. You got to come back. You <laughs> always, come back. <laughs> always. For real, for real. Yo, yeah, now, um, you college was never in the picture? No, no. Nobody never pressured you, like, you should do this or? I mean, teachers, mm-hmm. you know, especially because, like, I don't know. Like I was, I was a pretty good student. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. I was always like trying to get my work done. You feel me? Like I was pretty studious. But um, college, I just never really saw it for myself because it was just like mm-hmm. mm, not to say like I love school. Like if anything, I would do like a trade school. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. You know what I'm saying? And go solely for what I want to learn exactly. Exactly. and just x out all the math and science <laughs> yeah, yeah, and extra bullshit. Yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you wanted to be that you never told nobody? Um. 
Nobody. That I don't tell anybody. As you did, but as a little kid, you know, you had those little, you know, moments like I wanted to be a tap dancer. I wanted to play a piano and shit. Like when I, I was younger, I actually <laughs> I wanted to piano. be a few things. I wanted to at first I wanted to be a drummer. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Once upon a time I wanted to be a drummer, but then at one point, like I kinda wanted to be like a teacher. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, for, you know, elementary kids. Mm-hmm. And then at one point I wanted to be a pediatric therapist, you okay. know, for children, just because I felt like because I was somebody who never really had nobody to talk to mm-hmm. when I was young. So it was just like I kinda wanted to be that safe yeah, space let, for yeah. other young kids. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you still can too though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you can do the music at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might need you, might need you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Now when it comes to like the music and stuff and you and you rapping. Before we get to you, like, how do you feel about female rappers now? Because your tape, you, you talk about, you know, real shit, deep shit. How do you feel about, like, female rappers that kind of, like, uh, sell the sex appeal just to, you know what I'm saying, get talked about, get mentioned? Be honest. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be shit, honest. Shit. It's like, do what you got to do, but it's just like, uh, Like, when I get on Instagram, like, I get tired of seeing people shake their ass. Like, yeah. it'd be a lot of artists, like, they feel like they got to show a certain amount of skin and shake ass just to be seen or heard. And it's just like, that's so lame. Because yeah. it's just like, where's the real artistry in that? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's like, it's a bad thing to do, but it's just like, when that's pretty much a lot of people know you for, like, yeah, sex sales. Mm-hmm. But... Mm, I don't want to sell sex. You yeah. feel me? Like, it's nothing wrong with having a sex appeal without mm. compromising, you know, yourself. Mm. You feel me? Or like some type of integrity. Like, that's different. But I don't know. I just don't. Mm, like, Sexy Red, for example. <laughs> yeah, I just. TT yeah. don't like that. Cut it off. Yeah. Cut it off. Like, it's annoying. Yeah. Like, they not even talking about nothing. Like, what the hell is ski? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm what like, is that? Man, like, I don't get it. I call it basketball, and they want to, the girls want to hear some hype music, and they turn that shit on. I'm like, no, hell no. <laughs> hell no. I can't <laughs> do it. I can't, I don't like to listen to it. Mm. You know, like, it's just, I don't know. Like, I just feel like if, uh, if it's a female artist trying to, like, really make it big in the music industry, I feel like that's just like the easy way out. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, but why not just be your true self? It yeah. might take a little longer, yeah, yeah, yeah. but so what? You feel me? Like, I ain't got people telling me how to dress, what to what to say. How, what You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I just, I can't yeah. get jiggy with it. But it'd be, it be hard. Like, even like, even for the, on the male side, like, when you got like just a, a rapper who got bars, it's going to hard to, it's, it's going to be hard to sell somebody who just like the everyday rapper. You know what I'm saying? They, you you got to do so much more than just rap now to sell. You got to have the, the look. You got to have... You got to do the new TikTok dance. Like you got to do so much shit just to sell a record. Back in the day, you I mean, of course you had trash rappers, but you had like a lot of people who could really rap and they were selling music because they can really rap. Yeah. Now it's just more than just, okay, what else can you do besides just rap? You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to sell this, I guess this this fantasy or some shit. And then on the woman's side, like the sexy red shit, it's like they, I just don't know how the niggas like it. I ain't trying to hate, <laughs> but it's like, me and my son was in that car, she had like three songs that's on the radio. So it's kind of like they force feeding it. So it they, they kind of like forcing you to like it because you're hearing it so much. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, damn, now nah, I'm saying ski yee or now nah, I'm saying, I, I ain't going to say my pussy hole, bro. But, you know, my booty bra and shit. Like, but it's like, it's easy to get catchy. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So. I mean, I, I, I get that, but it's just like, come like, on now. Like, like when you mm. in the studio, like, all right, what am I going to say? Oh, my booty hole, bro. <laughs> Like, like what was you on? Like what was you smoking? Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. So yeah, so you look at it like of course you wanna have that, but do you feel like they need more like real female MCs that can really like so you can show a different side? Because like every for the most part, every woman rapper is like the same. But yeah. you do got a few out there, don't get me wrong, you got a few that really rap. They really can do their thing. But it's more so it's overshadowed by that type of rapper. Yeah, I feel like it's just like a real big distraction. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. artists like that. I just feel like it's a real big distraction. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, it's nothing wrong with that because it's just like, you know, it's music for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people, they do want to hear that. They want they want something they can shake their ass to. And okay, yeah. by all means, play that. You feel yeah. me? But it's also other people that want to hear the real shit, the raw shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some other shit. Like, it's music for everybody. Yeah. And it's just like, I just feel like when female artists or artists in general that you know that sell sex mainly mm-hmm. it's just highlighted like you said for more sure. than for any sure. other like type of music so, somebody come to you like lyric we need a sexy red type song find somebody else to do it <laughs> what you <laughs> gonna do <laughs> find somebody else to do it because i ain't doing it yeah for ain't sure. gonna be me yeah so i i did speaking of, of lyric bill how you 
Is, uh, how you get the name? The, your, your your stage name? Um, I know so, it's not your, your real name. I seen your real name on the little. You know, I ain't gonna put it out there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because I wanna know. We're gonna talk after. <laughs> um, so in the midst of like trying to come up with the name, I just felt like, you know, every time I talked or everything that came out of my mouth or whenever I wrote, I just everything was a lyric to mm-hmm. me. You know, everything was a song to me. Mm-hmm. Every sound. You know, I look like the way that I view things was just so different. And I just I looked at everything as music, mm. whether somebody's car alarm is going off. I'm like, I, I hear other instruments behind the whole car alarm. And I'm yeah. like, dang, you could do something with that. Or, you know, um, if it's like like anything, mm. honestly, I just felt like it was all music to me. And I was just like, all right. So where do you fit in with that? Mm. And it was just like lyric yeah. you are the lyrics the lyrics are you mm-hmm. lyric you feel me yeah. and i was like okay but lyric what yeah. and i was like you gotta have a ring to it and like I, I kid you not like i can't even make this up i was flipping through channels one day i wasn't even like trying to figure out the second part mm-hmm. for lyric bell i just was flipping through channels trying to find something to watch on tv mm-hmm. and i came across um drake and josh i came on <laughs> and you know how i show like the credits and the titles and it was like drake bell and it was just like bell it, yeah. it literally <laughs> rang a bell in my head like hey yo that's it yeah. lyric bell and it's just like you know it it rings in people's name For like sure. you know it's like i feel like it's something that would be easy to remember yeah, yeah. no it's, it's hard i was actually gonna name my uh i thought i named my daughter lyric like yeah. you know what i'm saying that was that was one of the names that but we and me and my wife didn't agree and stuff i'm like whatever <laughs> name 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 the girl whatever you want name. <laughs> but lyric was, lyric was on the list lyric autumn you know what I'm saying a couple yeah. names that was on there that did my name didn't make the list so yeah. It's all good, whatever. <laughs> but no, that's good. a dope name because it's important to have a, a catchy name. I feel like Larry Bill is a, you know what I'm saying? That's a good name to have. It's dope. It's a, it it seems like it's you too. Yeah, for, it fits. For me, I'm like, damn, is that her real name? I'm like, oh, <laughs> nope, wrong. A lot of people, a lot of people, you know, it's it's very rare, but when they do find out like my real name, yeah. you know, if you know, you know. Yeah. But when they do find out, they're like, but you look like a lyric, and I'm like, nigga, I know. You feel me? Like, <laughs> yeah. now was uh, did you put like, was it like the lyric bell on there? Like, was it that or was it just? Yeah, it was cut? definitely the lyric bell. And yeah. after so long, like people kind of just cut on. Like now, I don't even have to announce myself as the lyric bell. Like people just kind of so, already like. That's your real name. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah, see, I be digging. I be digging. I'll I, I say, I ain't gonna put your name out there like that. You know what I'm saying? That's all I want to show you real quick. It's all good. <laughs> now, did you ever think of any other names that, like, didn't make the, you know what I'm saying, make make it that was trash? Like, you know what I'm saying? No, because it was like once Lyric came, it was almost, it was gonna be like lyrical or mm-hmm. something like that. But I was like, we're just gonna keep it simple, like Lyric. For sure. And it, it, I don't know, it was like the first thing that came and it and it stuck. Mm-hmm. And so I left it with you that. Said, you saw Drake and Josh and like Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't he the one who was messing with the young girls and he in jail now? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> he he fooling. He fooling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, man. Hey, hey, niggas wilding out here. Niggas wilding. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the project. You dropped the project uh, Surrender a few days ago on the 23rd. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talk about, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, the process and how your expectations wasn't so high. You, know, you was happy with for five people, you know what I'm saying, rock with it. But you was, like, I guess excited because you saw people actually pre-ordering it. Like, so how do you feel about this project so far as early? It just came out, but how you feel like, you know what I'm saying, it's been so far? I feel like, I feel like I'm having postpartum mm-hmm. with the album. Like, not in a bad way like you know how like women go through like after they give birth to their <laughs> so, kid yeah, yeah, yeah. and they go through this like you know i just i just want to be a good mom and you know this is my life i created i don't want to fuck it up you know i, I want to protect it and mm-hmm. it's just like as soon as it dropped i was so emotional because i'm just like damn like all right you done <laughs> did this like now you gotta like really keep up you gotta no, you gotta come harder every time after this like you can't you know I'm like now people gonna have a certain expectation of you it's just like oh my god like <laughs> and so many people are like yo like way more people tapped in and i than i expected like mm-hmm. you know i don't know what i was expecting to be honest but it was just like i'm talking strangers mm-hmm. like tapping in people i'm just like oh my god I'm <laughs> now were you god. afraid to put it out at first Cause a, lot, a lot of times artists like especially on your first project you hold it so long you never think it's the right time to put it out like did it take you a minute to like just release Ooh, it it did yeah it took me two years oh shit yeah um you were sitting on that boy simply <laughs> because like originally it was going to be called so many other different things like mm. you know it was going to be called this and it was going to have this on but this on didn't make the cut and then i was just like writing new songs as time went on and i'm mm. like damn like you know my whole direction of it kind of like would change over time and i'm like 
I don't want to put something out and then re- regret it later. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to put it out and five years later be like, damn, like yeah. I did that. Yeah, it was the, yeah, for sure. For sure. No, it was, it was, it was dope. I not me listening to a project. I feel like it was things that you need to get off your chest that you might have not been able to talk to people about. I feel like that was your way of, all right, look, this is what I'm going through. It's on the, it's on the music. Listen to it. You're going to hear it. And that's yeah. me. Yeah. So I what, like to write about the shit that I don't talk about. For sure. For <laughs> sure. Now, give me your top four songs off the project. I'll give you mine. Okay. Mine is uh, uh, Mother's Day, uh, Alone, On One, and uh, Alone Nights. Mm. My top four, um, one of them is Superstar, mm. um, Shadows, mm. Um, on one for sure, mm. and uh, hmm, dang, it's hard. Yep, superstar on one shadows, and I would have to say alone. Okay, alone as well. Okay, now you say you had this boy in the in the, in the, in the tuck for two years before you released it. <laughs> now that you ain't released it, do you listen to? Listen back to it like, damn, I should have said this or I should have added this. Are you still kind of critiquing the album, even though you put it out already? Honestly, I thought that I would, but no. Mm -hmm. Like, not even a little bit. Like, I I stream it through and through, like, from beginning to end, Mm -hmm. on shuffle, whatever. And it's just like, they're, like, the way that I did it was so intentional. Like, you know, there's a song on there that's not, like, really mixed and mastered, mm. but it was just, like, it's still art, you know? And if I if I was to try to redo it, I feel like it wouldn't have had the same type of feel to it. Mm-hmm. So I left it alone because some things just cannot be recreated. Yeah. And, um... You know, like it was, it was, it was, it just shows everything all in one. It's like mm-hmm. an all in one. Like you get like a little bit of the turn up, like, yeah, I can do this, that, and the third. But yeah. then you get like the vulnerability, the soft side, mm-hmm. the shit that I never like talked about or spoke on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It just kind of, I feel like it really, especially as a first project, I feel like it's a really good introduction to me as an artist. Because mm-hmm. for somebody that might have not have ever heard of me or my music, they mm-hmm. can go stream that and hear a little bit of everything. For sure, yeah, yeah. And, not just one thing, you know, yeah, yeah. Not just one sound. Is there anything, you, what, what you want to accomplish with this album? Like, is it a, a deal? Is it more recognition, more fans, shows? Like, what's some things that you want to accomplish off this project? I will, honestly, probably just more recognition. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, not to say that, like, the lit and, like, the hip-hop version of Lyric wasn't, like, me. It mm-hmm. just wasn't all of me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it was so much that was, like, tucked and hidden. So mm-hmm. it's just like, all right, if y'all like this, you know, and some people might some people might like this side better. Some people mm-hmm. might like the other side better. Like, to each its own. Like, that's what it's all for, for whatever. Sure. But I also feel like, um, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, they could choose, but... Um, they can choose. Yeah, I yeah, just, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Now you ain't gonna wait another two years to drop the next project, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't need that. We don't need that. No. Bro. Now it was eighteen songs. I was surprised because you know the new wave. Everybody trying to go as short as possible. Six, seven, eight songs. What made you choose to do eighteen? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. You know, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you asked that because, like, I even had people, like, in the meantime, like, people that I was working with or, like, you know, talking to about it, whether it be other artists, producers, you know, they was telling me, like, you know, I think you should, you know, that's a lot of songs, you know, because da, da, da. So, basically, like, if you ain't nobody big like Drake or Nicki Minaj, mm-hmm. ain't nobody about to sit there and stream For that sure. whole album. <laughs> but at the same sense, I knew my audience mm-hmm. and the way that they request certain things. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, they tap in when I drop something. Like, people been asking for a project. People been asking like that. And um, I just felt like I didn't want to limit myself. Like, yeah, I feel like four songs, seven songs, that's not enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sitting on so much. And yeah. even outside the project, I still got stuff I'm sitting on right now. So it's just like... And then another thing, too, was like... I'm real big on... You know how you say, like, give people your flowers now, do mm-hmm. it now. You know, I'm real big on just do it now because at any given moment, mm-hmm. I could be going tomorrow. For sure, yeah. You feel me? Definitely I really could be going tomorrow. Like, I didn't lost people. And it's just like, damn... I thought I had time. I thought I was going to see them again, mm-hmm. but I didn't mm-hmm. and I couldn't. So it was just like, all right. But so I was like, damn, if I, if I was, if something was to happen to me out the blue, you know, all this going to the studio, all this working on that, that what is it for? If you have mm-hmm. nothing to show for it after you gone, you feel me? So yeah. it's just like, even if I'm going tomorrow, y'all at least got this. For sure. For you sure. know what That's I mean? That's how I feel about the podcast. If something happened to me, 
knock on wood, you know what I'm saying? My kids got something they can see me, hear me, you know what I'm saying? All that junk right here. Yeah. 177 episodes, you feel me? So that's something I'm proud of. And when I'm gone, I hope it's not t- no time soon. But right. you always got something that you can look back on like, damn, my dad was crazy or my granddad, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. So that'd be dope. But you said something. I went stalking your uh, Facebook page. <laughs> you said, uh, everybody want to collab and make music together until I mention my prices. So talk about that, like, people want to work with you, but they feel like what they feel since you're a new artist that it should be for the free, free 99? I or... don't know what they, you know, uh, somebody had mentioned, like, you know, you know, it was a good perspective, like, you know, well, maybe it's not even about that, like, you know, are they going to gain anything from it or this, this and that? Mm-hmm. You know, that was a good point, but I just, I don't know, like, a lot of people, they might look at me like, oh, she feel like she too good to work with me for free, and it's just like, no, it's just a matter of, like, I take myself, you know, seriously. I take my craft seriously and this shit ain't cheap, you know? Mm, yeah, for sure. So it's just like, you know, I've been taking music seriously, performing and going to the studio since I was 14, 15 and 23 now. So it's just like, all right, I didn't, I done built a little name for myself. Like I ain't nobody big, but mm. it's just like, you know, I feel like, I feel like I'm worth enough to for you to at least pay you know what i'm saying like that that takes time it takes effort it takes creativity Mm -hmm. and i feel like if if a person comes to me and they request me to be on a song they know that i'm bringing something that they can't do by themselves so i just feel like yeah you have to pay answer your prices it wasn't that bad like you said like what 50 for a verse yeah like (laughs) i'm not even charging y'all nothing crazy because like you got some new artists like yeah uh uh october deal 400 (laughs) like nigga what Four hundred. Do you reg- even have four hundred? So yeah, regular like, price six hundred. Like dog, you better don't miss out. Like all right, bro, I ain't paying you four hundred, dog. I'm a new artist too, but no, that's reasonable. A hundred fifty dollars, like you know, that's straight. Like that ain't too bad to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do do have you ever encountered somebody trying to work with you, but really trying to get on you? Oh my gosh, all the time. <laughs> what was the corniest shit somebody like? <laughs> I did, but call him out. You ain't got to put the name out there. Him or she, she, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it was a few, it was quite a few occasions. Yeah. Like, you know, hell, I just met somebody at a show like last week. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you don't gotta, you don't gotta pay me to record. I'm like, mm, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do that. I'm gonna just... stick to my, you yeah. know, normal engineer, my brother. Like, I'm, I'm cool. For sure. Like, just weird stuff. Like, you know, they be trying to, oh, let me get you on a track. They weigh into some pussy. Like, nah, yeah. that's just not gonna work. <laughs> that's just not gonna work. Yeah, you know, uh, Good Morning Queen. What, oh, it, 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 be, it, be, it be coming. Let's work on music to Good Morning Queen Ooh, to Grand Rise. It's beautiful. Yeah. Nah, Mike Messer, I'll send you a piece, pit, like. <laughs> Like, it got to be hard yeah. being a female artist, period. Like, because niggas, you don't know if niggas, like, really trying to work with you or yeah. if niggas trying to get with you. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, I just be so cautious. Yeah, you got to. You got I to. I got to, because yeah. I'm not one of the type. I don't want to sell sex. I'm mm-hmm. not fucking my way to the top. Mm-hmm. I don't want no handouts. I don't want it the easy way. I don't care how long it take, truth be told. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it my way or the yeah. highway. Yeah. Y'all can do it. You know what I'm saying? Do See, it. all you niggas mm-hmm. messed it up for me when I was trying to sit here and get on the show to really, you know what I'm saying, talk some shit. <laughs> Y'all niggas talk Grand Rising, <laughs> peace to the queen. Like, oh my gosh. Y'all niggas is funny, dog. Damn, niggas is funny. Now, I do this thing called Talk About the Bars. I take a piece of, of your song or a bar or a lyric mm-hmm. and we just break it down a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to start with an old ass song. I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what, what's something that you don't really give a fuck about today? Today? Yeah. It, it was that was that was like what five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I was you know I was I'll be trying to dig and just <laughs> something I don't really give a fuck about today. I would have to say friendship. Okay. Honestly, mm-hmm. I would have to say friendship mm-hmm. because like don't get me wrong, like you know everybody wants like a sisterhood or a brotherhood or whatever mm-hmm. the case, but I don't know. Like people are really odd, mm-hmm. like real odd, and it's just like I can like I could just smell like bullshit. negative yeah. energy or bullshit from a mile away, mm-hmm. like just because of the things that I've experienced and went through. So it's just like, uh, oh, already, mm, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like it's it's got to be genuine. Like, I'm just so cool on it, like. And, you know, not to say that I'm against making like you know new connections or friends or anything like that. It's just like for every time that I have. Mm-hmm. 
It was just always weird. Like I constantly was like explaining myself on why I'm this way and why I can't talk to you every day. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's just I got tired of explaining myself. Like if I do come across somebody I want my I might want to be friends with, I don't want to have to explain myself. You should just get it. We yeah, should just be sure. on the same <laughs> yeah. frequency. No, for sure. Simple as that. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now in the song Lost, you say I'm always preaching peace, but I can't seem to keep it. Talk about that, like yeah so like i'm real like yeah peace love light all that but sometimes Mm. it ain't always that like i'm always trying to be the person like you know to spread positivity but Mm. i be drowning in it yeah i be drowning myself and but obviously i don't talk about it so it's just like it'd be hard to keep it for myself because Mm. i don't know maybe because i don't open up but it's Mm. just like you know nothing is like forever so it's like even if you do find something or someone to make you happy it's not gonna always be peaches and cream Mm -hmm. but it was just like just having that peace within myself you know that i'd be wanting other people to have so badly it's just like damn like okay you you be good for a minute but then it's just like all right now you back in the shadows like Mm -hmm. damn like i can't seem to like hold on to it like i can't keep a good grip on it for sure yeah. Now, if you don't want to talk about this, just tell me, you know, kiss your ass, whatever we want to talk about it. <laughs> but on, on on one, you said I had to flip the script. I used to slip my wrist. I used to start myself because I because I felt because uh, I felt like shit. Talk about that, like, and, and if you want to, if you don't, it's cool. Yeah. Now, so now, oh, and what was the, like, what was the whole cause and then reasons for you know behind this? Man, I was a depressed little kid. Uh-huh. You know, um, even though like growing up, it was for the most part it was always like me and my brother but like you know we got different dads so like he would go and either be with his friends or like his cousins on his dad's side you know Mm -hmm. my sister was gone my mom worked a lot so i spent a lot and i mean a lot of time by myself as a Mm -hmm. kid and you know i i always like just i don't know like i just feeling like you never had nobody like not a safe space to turn Mm -hmm. to and you know um Growing up, it was like, you don't really have nobody, like, you know, not in a bad way, but it was just like, not nothing was like really being poured into me. Like, you know, as a reminder, like, you know, you are enough or, you know, you're, you're this or you're that. And it was just like, you know, I got bullied when I was younger. Like they used to make, like when I was younger, like I had a gap. I mean, I still mm. got one, but it was like way more spaced yeah, out when yeah, I was sure, younger, yeah. you know? So they made fun of my teeth. They mm. made fun of my eyes. They made fun of the fact that, you know whatever like and then like mm-hmm. getting into teenage years i was um i was a little bit you know a little a little chunk of chunk you feel <laughs> me like i wasn't like big yeah, but it was sure, just sure. like you know i wasn't right. this size yeah. either and you know when you at a certain age when you like hit that peak of like puberty and stuff like that you just real self-conscious about, yeah, about how you almost. look about yeah. everything and you know um people used to always like because i mean i'm a foodie like that's never going nowhere but like mm-hmm. you know people would comment on things like you know my weight or oh you you, you better slow down you're gonna end up like this or mm-hmm. you know um you can call it chubby or whatever the case might be like mm. you know like oh, oh you got a gut you feel me like mm. just all all type of stuff and i was just like so self-conscious and at the time it was like too much and shit yeah it was like too much and you know i i was actually like listening to those outside voices like mm. damn like don't nobody ever sit here and be like oh but you're beautiful that i like i was always getting picked on yeah and at one point i was just like damn like maybe they right i started mm. to believe it like it, it gets said so much like it's got to be true and mm-hmm. i started to hate myself for it like yeah. i didn't like it got to a point i didn't like looking in the mirror because mm-hmm. i didn't like what i saw you feel me and i was just like well maybe if i don't eat i'll lose i'll lose some weight yeah. you feel me or and shit the the whole like self-harming thing that was just like a it was like i was so angry about a lot of things i was hurt about a lot of things and feeling like i couldn't have nobody to talk to and even though i had my journal that didn't always help and it was just like i just wanted to let it out and i guess like but i didn't want to hurt nobody else in the process so i i hurt myself like i I let it out on myself and it was just like mm, it was real dark but what uh, what got you out of that uh that dark situation like what what, you know saying got Um, you from no harm and, and not feeling you know saying type of way about yourself and just you know feeling good about yourself the music honestly mm-hmm. that's when i really started to just like really turn more towards the music like all right you journal and write your diary all the time mm-hmm. but it's just like all right start 
putting some words together, put some poems together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like, even if it wasn't something that I was sharing with other people, it was just like, all right, share it with yourself. For like, sure. do this for you. Have that outlet. Mm-hmm. You know, and once I started like performing, even though I was terrified and had <laughs> stage fright, it was just like, I wanted it bad enough. So I was just like, all right. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. You know, and I just, I kept doing that because it was like a, whether it was me writing a song or a poem, it was a distraction from, you know, the outside voices, mm-hmm. even though I was writing about what I was feeling and what I was going through, it was like, all right, but all right, this, this makes me feel better. Like this makes me, you know, feel proud. This makes me feel happy. Mm-hmm. You know, this makes me feel joy. So I I kept doing it. For sure. For sure. For sure. Hell yeah. I'm glad everything good. Shit, man. Yeah. For real. Cause you know, people go through that stuff and they don't know how to get out of that, you know saying? That dark space. You feel me? They, oh, they ain't got nothing like, oh, you had music to kind of like, you know what I'm saying, save you and stuff like that. They ain't got nothing. Yeah. So. It took a while for sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, especially when you have to pull yourself out. Yeah. Oh, It'd be so like hard. that. What's that, what's that movie? Uh, when you're getting that sunken place, like, <laughs> damn, I'm stuck in this motherfucker. Yeah. Life be like that, though, for real. Like, damn, what's that? Uh, get, get out, out get out, yeah. get out, get out. Yeah, you're a good person for that. <laughs> now, on the song Mother's Day, you said... That's, that's one of my favorite songs. I like that song. You say, mm-hmm. like, today is Mother's Day and I'm crying at the table trying to blink back the tears, but I guess I wasn't able. So that, that song is about your granny, you yeah. know what I'm saying, her passing away and stuff like that. Talk about that. Talk about her and just like, you know what I'm saying, her significance in your life. It's so crazy because I actually have on um, my necklace with her name on it. Okay. Debra. That's what's and up. I haven't worn this necklace in over a year mm-hmm. probably it's been a while mm-hmm. but for some i was just like nah granny you're gonna come with me today for on sure, podcast. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy that you say that um i love my granny man like yeah. she was she was the one that spoiled all her grandkids mm-hmm. you know what i mean and like she had her own individual relationship with everybody like everybody had their own nickname you feel me <laughs> what was your, what was your nickname Piglet. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was saying, before we go any further. <laughs> My name was Piglet. That's what's is up. Piglet. Yeah. And um she called me Piglet because I'm a foodie. Like ever since I came out the womb, it was yeah. just like that girl can eat. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And that was always her nickname for me. <laughs> so like she just always had her own like personal connection with everybody to to the point where she made them feel special in their own way. But mm-hmm. not that she loved this person or that person the most or more than the other, but it was just like that special connection. No, she was just like, a, a, you know, grannies are like safe spaces. Hell you think yeah. they're going to live forever. Man. Like, come on, you know, oh man, I miss her so much. Big red. That hey. was her favorite color. That was also her nickname. Red was always her favorite color. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, like it was, it was mother, literally Mother's Day when I wrote that whole entire song. Okay. And I just was like, you know, I just, I didn't want to cry because, mm-hmm. you know, my mom was like, I don't want to cry today. For I don't sure. want to da 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 da. Mm-hmm. So, but when I was by myself, I'm like, but I do. Like, I didn't want to, but mm-hmm. it, it came out anyways. And I, yeah. It was raining. And I'm like, damn, like, you know, you know how, like, when a certain pillar in the family, like, pass away, like, the rest of the family kind of just, like, dissolved. That was like, my, you know. that was my next, uh, bro, I was going to talk about. He said, uh, you was the pillar of the family. Now we all disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, even before, you know, she passed, I feel like, it was always like you know it's all, I mean every family got their issues mm-hmm. but I just felt like everything really came to surface when she was gone you know what I'm saying you know how they say when somebody passed away everybody showed their true colors true, for sure. and that's exactly what happened and it's just like damn like one thing she was big she was a family woman you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying all she cared about was her kids grandkids great grandkids like that's all she you know what I mean and I just felt like damn like I wonder how she would feel if she no. knew that you know da 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 you know mm-hmm. or such and such not speaking or whatever, but everything happened for a reason. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's how my, I be feeling the same way. Like, you know saying? My grandma, my great grandma, like I was able to, you know, be around both of them. But it's like when they pass away, it do, like things fall apart. Because like granny house is where you go for holidays. Like, you know what I'm saying? No matter what, yeah. she gonna make some good food. Cause you know, all my great granny, you know, you got those grandma arms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> That's what we say all the time. Like, they made some good food, boys, with collard greens. Greens, like, man. Okay. Hell yeah. yeah. So, like, when she passed away, it's like, all right, now we got to find, like, something else. Like, somebody else else house to, to go to. Because, like, when she passed away, it's like everybody was doing a separate thing with their immediate family. Like, their kids and stuff like that. It wasn't like all of us coming together like we used to. Yeah. So, even now, like, our family, a lot of people didn't pass away. Like, my mom's, my granny, my great granny. So, it's like, all right, what do we do now? I got my family in the crib, but I still want to get around my other family. So right. that's when we do little things like tomorrow we're going to do a little 
we made a tradition out of like hanging out the last Saturday before Halloween. Right. It's because it's just something to get together. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's so, important. Yeah, but no, rest in peace to Grandma Deborah, Big Red. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, love me the right way. You say in our darkest times, people show their true colors. Like, just talk about that. Like, how, like, you know, when, when shit get hard, people, you know what I'm saying, tend to disappear. Yeah, I don't. That shit hurt. You feel me? <laughs> Especially when you on the on the receiving end of it, like you know whether it it don't matter what the relationship is or was, but it's just like damn, like we was so close, mm -hmm. like we was everything, and you know, I I it was it's so hard to put in words, but it's just like damn, we was like this, mm -hmm. and then but because this happened, it's just you just went poof, mm -hmm. and it's just like wow, like yeah. damn, like. If that's the case, that's how you felt all this time. Like, you yeah. know, it just really kind of make you question, like, damn, like, well, how did you feel this whole entire time leading up to this point? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just, nah, for sure. you know, may really make you question some things. No, it fucked me up right now because, like, listen to your story. For some reason, I'm getting, like, resemblance of my mother. For some reason, like, no, for real, because my mom, had, she had locks. You know what I'm saying? My mom was the, I remember I used to get, man, I used to almost get to fights because she was like, it wasn't cool back when she had them. You know, in the 90s and shit. Yeah. But, like, she went through, like, some of the same things. Like, her father left her when she was uh, eight years old, whatever. You know what I'm saying? She always wanted to build a relationship back. But he was, you know, he was on bullshit. He moved to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Her her issues with her mom and then her being raised by her grandma. So, it's like, damn. Yeah. What the fuck going on around here? Let me, not, <laughs> let me get, not get sad looking at you. <laughs> For real, man. But, no, that's what's up, though, man. Now, the last one I'm going to go on is uh, when you said uh, on loss. When you said, honestly, I'm getting used to people always leaving. Like, is, so to me, I'm thinking that these songs is kind of like how you used to feel. And this ain't how you feel today. Yeah. So like, like when you, so that go back to kind of like, you know, saying the other song. So like, you know, saying, and you kind of touched on it earlier, like people leaving, like after a while, do you think it was, it was you, it was on you and stuff like in, while people was leaving? I started to, you know, question that within myself, like, damn, mm -hmm. like, what did I do? Like, I just was, you know, that'd be the first thing, especially as women, like, damn, what did I do wrong? Like, mm -hmm. what could I have done differently? Like, why, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, what was it? Like, but honestly, now it's just like, I don't even really take it personal no more because mm -hmm. it, it more than likely it was them. Like, yeah. maybe you couldn't, I don't know, maybe you just couldn't handle whatever it was mm. you know what i'm saying or maybe this was too much pressure for you even though i don't put pressure on nobody for sure like you know do what you do like I, i'm so chill yeah like, that's when you go back to that old song i don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> for real like yeah. i just feel like it's personal like you know what maybe the next part of their journey just don't include me for sure that's, that's, that's okay. okay hell yeah it do sometimes man we lose people every day you be like damn what the fuck because you go back on pictures i tell my son this like man friends you got right now you boy you won't know nobody mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The friends you got at 16, once you 20, 18, shit, they gonna disappear. 21, them friends gonna disappear. So yeah. it's always it's always about just learning yourself and being comfortable, like you said, being comfortable, being alone, and man, and, and gaining new relationships. Yeah. Now, let's get off the sad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's get to the part that, you know what I'm saying, I love when people, you know what I'm saying, agree to rap. And I seen your uh, your rapper auntie's house. Hey. You went, you went, you went, you went crazy. So yeah. I was I was cool because some people I listen to like oh, I ain't gonna ask them to rap <laughs> <laughs> like I pass but you I feel like all right let me ask her see if she say yeah and she said yeah she actually sent the beat over so good to go ooh let's get to it you already know we get to my favorite part I gotta put my uh my voice on <laughs> shout style Tuesday we got Larry Bell AKA Pistol Grip <laughs> but no <Boy>. bars. <laughs> Look, me and my witches, me and my shorties, better watch out cause we coming 
get to the blue, get to the cheese, baby, you know that we thumb it. Counting the fives, counting the tens, yeah, we stacking these hundreds. I'ma make it out the hood, baby, I know that shit is for certain. I'm just getting started for real, somebody please come up on my curtains. I be up in a trap, just like a Mexican working. I was up at Bar Louie, I was slaving and serving. Had to quit that shit, I found out my worth and that wasn't worth it. Ooh, I done did this shit a hundred times, but I still get nervous. I started slanging them bars, and that made niggas nervous. Please stop calling my phone, cause baby, you was not getting no service. I bet on myself every day, I swear, it's like a LB versus. And when I looked at the clock, it was 4.55. I know that the changes are coming. I'm so glad to be alive. And when I looked at the clock, it was 11.11. Guess the blessings coming in, ayy I'm talking seven on sevens, look Me and my witches, the baddest of witches We coming to eat and we cleaning the dishes We brewing that shit up when we in the kitchen You hear me talking, shut up and listen You hear me talking, to shut up and listen I got in my bag, then hopped up my feelings I'm feeling so hot, I touch the ceiling And pretty soon I'ma be racking a milli Get to the blue, get to the cheese Baby, you know that we thumbing Counting the fives, counting the tens Yeah, we stacking these hundreds Better watch out cause we coming Better watch out cause we coming Me and my witches, we coming Ay, Me and my shorties, we coming We coming, we coming, we coming we com- <laughs> <laughs> Hey, she had me hype, nigga I was- <laughs> Damn, I should have brought some bars, nigga And she ain't had no phone out She ain't mess up Killing y'all niggas, man <laughs> Get your mind right, get your goddamn mind right So what, what, what more you want to do what next year as far as the music like what's some things some goals for 2024 2024 i'm trying to come bigger and better every sure. time like i really now that i you know got the project out and everything i really just want to um showcase more visuals mm-hmm. and things like that and really getting into like the visualization of like you know telling certain stories through my songs and whatnot mm-hmm. you know um also i really want to hop m- back more into my poetry bag Mm -hmm. you know because i got so comfortable with like the music and you know oh i could just talk about this and put it over a track but you know it's Mm -hmm. like now it's like easy so i want to get back into that to just to kind of like master everything like even though that's what i started with you know i i steered i ain't gonna say i steered away from poetry but kind of like i don't write it as much as i used to i don't Mm -hmm. practice it or like perform it as much as i used to Mm -hmm. so you know just hopping back in that but also like working on like visuals and stuff like that also more features too Mm -hmm. um because for a while i just was not doing no features like it it was nothing personal it's just one i'm picky (laughs) about who i work with two um I don't know. People be on bull, but also I just be like, mm, is this really gonna make my song sound better? Yeah, you know what sure, I mean? Yeah. So any people in mind that you want to work with? Um, I know I definitely want to work with um more people that's like, I definitely want to work with people that are bigger than me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. Uh, Rocky Bad is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I reached out to her. You know me too. what I mean? And um, <laughs> <laughs> I still waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <Say no. laughs> but uh, and it's a lot, it's a lot of like. I'm not gonna say underground because they like mm. they bigger than me, but like mm. they not like world renowned or anything. Sure. But I listen to a lot of like people like, hey, who was that? Yeah. Like you know this this dude from Baltimore, you feel me? Or mm. he from Florida? But like people that's just you know, it's a couple of people I do want to work with. Yeah. that's just doing. So, things so since you uh, you touched on Rocky Bear on the female side, uh, I got somebody, uh, Kayla Wan. She dope. I think that'd be a nice little. She she was on the show and stuff. She she a dope rapper. She 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 can spit. Okay, yeah, I'll, tap in. I'll, yeah I'll, I'll send you her information. Okay. Damn, damn I'm, I'm getting old. I forgot. I, I had something on my goddamn brain. I was gonna ask her ass. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I got this thing: young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. What's something that you believed in as a young seventeen, eighteen year old that you don't believe in now? Man, you ain't that old, but. <laughs> <laughs> 23 god damn it i get mad every time somebody say <laughs> they age in 20s like um um something i used to believe in mm-hmm. that i don't anymore mm-hmm. um it's hard to say like mm-hmm. i'll say like my perspective on a lot of things have like changed over the course of time mm-hmm. but um as far as beliefs go, uh, truthfully, that's the only thing that can come to my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I used to swear up and down, like, I'm not having no kids. I ain't mm-hmm. never going to have no kids. But 
That's something that I actually do want okay, eventually okay. one day. Yeah. But TT's still having fun right now. <laughs> sure. what, what, now, would you want your first kid to be a boy or a girl? Or it don't matter? I mean, I guess it don't matter. Yeah. But if, you know, if I'm having multiple, I, I would want the first kid to be a boy. Okay, yeah. See, that's all. Thank God. Thank God bless me with two boys in last kid, girl. I'm good now. <laughs> Anything happened to me? She got two protectors that's over her that's way older. Uh-huh. We all good. We all smooth. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Your locks and stuff. You know, I don't never want to just say dreads because that's, you ain't supposed to say dreads, supposed to say locks. Mm-hmm. When, how long have you been growing your hair and what made you, you know what I'm saying, decide to grow locks? Um, I have been growing them for four years now. Mm-hmm. October actually marked my actual like four year mark. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Mama, I told my mama, she grew her dreads in October. Oh, wow. When she had... <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, it, it was October. <laughs> yeah, right after my, my, my brother was born, she grew her, her dreads in October. Wow. All um, right, get off that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe start them. I don't know. Like, I was, like, I knew I always wanted them. Like, whenever I saw other people with locks, I just was, like, so, like, oh. mm-hmm. Like, not even, like, oh, you fine. But it was just, like, the locks was just, like, I don't know. Because, like, I never really was really big on, like, wearing weave or, like, getting my hair done, mm-hmm. you know, and all types of styles and stuff. I Like, even before my locks, like, I'd just rather have kept it natural. Mm-hmm. But... I got tired of doing my hair all the time. So, I mean, I still do it, but it's just like, I don't have to do it every single day. I don't have to worry about it. But also, it's just like, um, I don't know. I just felt like it was always something that I was supposed to have, in a way, if that makes any sense. Same thing my mom had said. (laughs) (laughs) She she got tired of doing her hair. (laughs) Ah, (laughs) Oh, shit. Now, making a band. I know you two young already know about making a band. But you know, you you have heard of it, making a band. Yeah, I've heard, with, of, with I've heard of it. All right, if you had making a band album, and you could choose you and four other artists for this one album, who would it be? It could be producers, it could be singers, it could be rappers, it could be all rappers, all singers, however you want it. It's you and four other people to make the lyric bill album. Um, it would be me, mm-hmm. two Cray Lexi, mm-hmm. um, real dope producer, mm-hmm. um. Artistry wise as well, Tainino. Okay. Um, two more. Two more. Hmm. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. Um. Leona Love. Mm-hmm. And. Uh. Hmm. Last but not least. Last but not least. Oh, uh, let me see. The grand finale, I would have to say, mm, I'm trying to put another meal in there. Yeah. It's, it's got to make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, <laughs> dang, this is a, mm. the last I, one. The last I would one have get to tough. say. Dang, it's gotta be good. You feel me? Like I'm trying to think about all of us together. Um, who do it? Who else do I know? <laughs> oh, I would also have to say Ace Mirror Man. Okay, okay. Yeah. These people, they from the, they from local. Um, a few of them are. The mm-hmm. only one that's not local is Leona Love. Okay, Leona Love. So uh, she, she gotta be a singer. Uh, she sing a little bit, but she rap. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. just tap in with her. She dope. Yeah, she's okay. definitely dope. That's what's up. What What's your advice to someone that want to start something but afraid of failing? You just gonna have to do it afraid. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For real, because yeah, yeah. like that fear, that feeling ain't gonna never really go away. It's just mm-hmm. you just gotta do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just do there. it. For Push sure. Push that shit out, man. Nah, for sure. Anything you want to <laughs> start new? Um, honestly, I wouldn't really say new. Mm-hmm. Um, but hop more into, uh, acting and film. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll play like small roles and stuff here and there. Mm-hmm. I've even, um, produced a short film at one point myself. Like that's something I do want to do later down the line, like make movies and films and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But for now, like I definitely like, um, want to get more into like acting too. I feel mm-hmm. like that's another like outlet of being able to express myself, but for like sure. through a different like characters and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. All mm-hmm. right. I ain't did this in a while. We're going to do two th- two little things before we end this off. I ain't did my uh my top three in a while. So you say you're, uh, you know what I'm saying, fruity. What's your top three foods? <laughs> you get happy talking about that. Like, hell, I know tacos. Tacos. I would say I know. Hard shell, soft shell. How you want? 
Soft shell, mm-hmm. traditional style, corn tortilla, please and thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For sure. Some um, tacos. Tacos. Uh, pho. I don't know if y'all familiar with the Vietnamese, you no, know what I'm saying? Saying, but pho is pho? That's it's got okay. my heart. Yeah. Some people to... might pronounce it as pho, yeah. but it's pronounced pho. Okay. And I don't know, I'm one noodle eating mug, you feel me? <laughs> like I love me some noodles, so I would have to say tacos, pho, and and honestly, falafel. Okay, okay. <laughs> Give me your top three moments in life. Top three moments. Yeah, it's pretty deep, deep Ooh, bag. Ooh, top three moments in life. I ask these questions in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, dang, top three moments. I'm say one. One should. I, I should. You should. One should be easy. One of your moments. One. That shit came out. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, one of them honestly is dropping my album. Yes, I was say I knew that got me. That got me yeah, one for sure. Definitely, like just as a kid, like I remember, I used to like always see myself doing certain things, mm-hmm. but I never thought that I would actually do it because I was so scared. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, I'm like, bro, don't let anybody know that you write songs. Like, <laughs> how do you? How the fuck you gonna be on the stage? You feel sure. me? <laughs> so dropping a project is definitely one of the biggest. Um, mm-hmm. Another one I would have to say would be um, when I lived in Cali, mm-hmm. I was out there for like a year That's what's up. and it wasn't really like no particular like event. It was just like that whole year mm-hmm. was just so like needed. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good moment. Good moment. Definitely. And then the last one I would have to say, um, Dang. The last one I would have to say is I have finally met up with, um, well, re-met up with one of my best friends out in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We had met on a cruise, Mm -hmm. like in the middle of the ocean. You feel me? We was on a cruise (laughs) to the Bahamas and I think it was like, I think I was 13, he was 14 or something like that, 14, 15, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. And we met on a cruise and it was like a bunch of us as far as like that age group. And we mm-hmm. all had like stay connected. This was like during kick days or whatever, you mm-hmm. feel me? And you know, we all was <laughs> like in a group right. chat, but <laughs> over time, me and him had just, we clicked real hard. So mm-hmm. like years that went by, like we just was, that was, that was my dog. Yeah. And you know, um, I think it was in 2021, we mm. had met again mm. up in the A, and that's four days of my life. That's what's up. For that's real. what's up. Shout out to the credit. Uh, <laughs> 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 Give me your top three celebrity childhood crushes. That's funny. I was just talking about this yesterday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you could do now or you could do when you was, I always say young. When I was young. You had the posters on the wall. And all uh, that Jaden Smith. Okay. Was one of them. Like I'm talking Karate Kid, Jada Smith, not Sayer yeah. Smith. Whatever he got going on now, you feel sure, me? Yeah. Um, Jada Smith was one of them. Okay. I used to be in love with Bruno Mars. You feel okay. me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I was. Yeah. And but like now, hmm, now I'm not gonna lie. Rest in peace to this man. But oh, I wish he was still alive. My Black Panther. Goodness. No, I can't find. Okay, okay, okay. You like you like dreads, man. <laughs> <laughs> dreads and thugs. Paquito. Yeah, <laughs> like he just was so. You know. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up man. Give me your give me your top three movies. Top three movies. Ooh, I like this one. This one easy. Mm. Um, one of them is Matilda. Okay. No. <laughs> I, I hate, the reason why I hate the movie because my wife that's like one of the the few movies she watched all the fucking time <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a comfort movie yeah. Matilda um Crooklyn oh shit the Spike Lee joint you that's feel a, me that's another one that made me cry then like God. yes if you honestly. want to see cry I'm gonna cry that one. No <laughs> I don't care who around it would have to be Matilda Crooklyn mm. and uh Casper Casper, okay, okay, yeah. okay. That's an interesting uh, choice. All right, let's stay on that. <laughs> Top three TV shows if you watch TV. Top three TV shows. Mm, one of them is Shameless. Okay. They get, they real shameless on yeah, there. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, another one would have to be, um, it's an anime, Full Metal Alchemist, mm-hmm. uh, but the Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. I love that. I got to figure out what anime my brother be uh, doing voiceover on. <laughs> he be doing voiceover with some anime, though. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's a good show. Yeah. Um, so you got Shameless, you got uh, Full Metal Alchemist, and um, 
Hmm. I would have to say, because I'm into like sci-fi and like weird shit, but I would, mm-hmm. I would have to say, um, Stranger Things. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. nigga, he watch, he be watching Aliens and all that type of shit. Man. Yeah. Now this is the, some new shit I've been doing. It'd be funny. What's what's worse? I give you two things. You tell me which one's worse. What's worse? Wearing fake jewelry or fake designer clothes? Mm. What's worse? Mm-hmm. Dang. I feel like... Because they're like one and the same to yeah. me. But if I really had to pick one, mm. I guess I would have to say the... I would have to say the jewelry, I guess. Okay, okay. Like, I mean, clothes is just like, like you know, they clothes. Yeah. They could be knockoff, whatever. Yeah, if that's what, but I mean, because yeah. I don't know. The fake jewelry, it could turn your shit green. So it's just like, <laughs> why would you want to, like, clothes ain't going to do that. Yeah. You feel me? But jewelry could. Yeah. Right, up, what you think What you think worse, performing and messing up a song or performing and messing up a poem? Which one is worse? What is it saying? A song. A song. Yeah. You kind of recover from the what's name, from the poetry, whatever. Yeah. People don't even be minded. They just be like, bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Bring it back For sure. from the top. What's worse, breaking up in person or breaking up over a text? Over a text is way worse. Yeah. I'd rather do it in person. Like, you know, I ain't feeling you. <laughs> hey, nigga, what? <laughs> laugh out loud. Like, <laughs> you know, you just laugh out loud. Everything feel everything Ain't shit better. funny. <laughs> what's worse, failing at something or not starting? Not starting. All right. What's worse? You find out your mate is cheating through text or in action? In action. Because somebody about to get fucked up. Yeah, somebody about to die. <laughs> yeah. What's worse? Find, finding out your parents aren't your real parents or your siblings are adopted? <laughs> the parents. Okay, okay. Where the hell I come from? <laughs> <laughs> What's worse? Losing your man to your homegirl or losing your man to your ex? <laughs> the home girl okay cause yeah yeah <laughs> like this nigga like crazy <laughs> alright what's worse not having money for your kids on Christmas or not having money for your kids on their birthday they birthday okay I always thought that Christmas might be worse birthday you can kind of like make some shit up I would say birthday cause okay. like Christmas ain't even your birthday. You feel me? (laughs) You feel me? And it's just like, that's the one day I feel like they would feel extra special. All right, what's worse? Somebody talking through a movie or somebody telling you the ending? Because I hate when niggas talk through movies. I would have to say talking through the movie, especially if I ain't seen it. Shut up. Like, I just missed the most important part. (laughs) What's worse? No car, nice crib, nice car, no crib. Say that one more time. Everybody always say that too. <laughs> no car, nice crib, nice car, no crib. What's worse? Yeah. I would have to say, damn. Oh, damn. I feel like, fuck. I would have to say what's worse to me would be nice crib, but no car. Okay, so, you, so you, uh, women say it a lot. So you rather have that, that, that whip, huh? I, I oh, move around too much. I don't know what the hell that yeah. came from. That must be over here too. Nigga went over there. I move up. I got to be on the go. All right. What, what's worse? Dying from getting shot or dying from getting stabbed? Stabbed? <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, if you want to shoot me, get it straight to the <laughs> point. <laughs> it be in a major <laughs> organ or something. Get this over with. All right. Pay attention to this one. What's worse? Being a tall nigga with short arms or being a short nigga with long legs. Because the torso, this part little, but the legs is. <laughs> like, even just imagining that is hilarious. <laughs> Damn. What, what type of shit? <laughs> Dude, so I, some drunk shit. I, I would have to say. Damn, because why your legs so. All right. <laughs> I, I would have to say a tall dude with short arms because. <laughs> If I ask you to reach for this and you still can't reach it, you tall, but your arms can't reach. You got to bite like that. <laughs> there you go. We want a cup. <laughs> All right. What's, this, 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 these last three, like this one be silly and shit. What's worse? This is for the females. Titties with no nipples, nipples and no titties. <laughs> it's 
Well, either you got nipples and, and nothing, or or breasts and no nipples, no areolas, no nothing. Damn, just, just I would have to say what's worse is the titties with no nipples, cause like <laughs> I like titties. You feel me? Like you, that's just not gonna look right. Like it's gonna make them less fun. I All feel right. like you know. Okay, okay that's a okay. lot. That's a lot less fun. <laughs> just be chest. Just be a. You feel yeah. me? Just be a bird. <laughs> what's worse? Yo, man, come extra quick. I'm talking three pumps and out, or he get, or he can't get up at all. Ooh, I would have to say the three pumps. Okay. Because if you can't get up at all, it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. And it's just like I'd rather be okay with it not happening versus you getting started and can't even finish, like yeah. or finish. You know what I mean? Finish quick. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's when you gotta do that. Hey, man, yo, it's just so good. It's your. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> Give me another chance, man. Nah, fuck that. Hey, have it to the best of us. <laughs> that first time, boy, your first time ever doing something, you be like, dog, man. I got to redeem myself. <laughs> now, shout out to everybody on the first time. You know what I'm saying? It could either be bad or it could not be bad. Yeah. But no, I, this was a good dope interview. And shit, I, I can't believe it. Is it. That shit went fast, but it was long. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming on the show. You want to give people some motivational words before you get up out of here? Um, a couple things. You feel me? Mm -hmm. If you ain't turned, you gotta get turned. Stay presidential. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Uh, shoot your shot because life too short, and the worst they can say is no mm -hmm. or hell no. Nah. <laughs> hey, please don't say hell no. Nah. You gonna fuck me that day? Music good? Hell no. Nah. Damn. You could say you could say no, nah, bro. Um and. You know, just do it afraid. Mm -hmm. That's it, really. Mm -hmm. Do it are, afraid. Are you okay with people crit critiquing your uh, your music and telling you like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that? Yeah, if it's okay. constructive criticism, sure. like I, I, I know the difference between like you hating. just being a dick and you hating yeah. versus like you actually like no, like you know, you know, it might bring a different angle or might sound, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely big on constructive criticism. For sure. For sure. And where can you find you on social media and all that good stuff? On social media, y'all can find me on Instagram at the Lyric Bell. Mm -hmm. No underscores, no numbers. Um, everything else is just straight Lyric Bell, like. Mm -hmm. right? Facebook, you know, music streaming platforms is just Lyric Bell. For sure, for sure. Any, any shows coming up? Anything you got lined up coming up? Definitely. I actually have a show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, Throw it on at Cork Town, hosted mm -hmm. by BZ Brown. Mm -hmm. It's like an all women's uh, artist uh, showcase, and we also gonna be um, raising awareness and money for Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well. For sure, hell yeah, hell yeah. So That's I'm what's excited up. about that. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Like I said, you got a unique story. I, it's just through the music. I knew it'd be a dope conversation. You know what I'm saying? I know you got that one track alone. Hey, if you need somebody to talk to, hit me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we don't need you. You know what I'm saying? Out here by yourself and shit, man. Yeah. But uh, shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying? This is the best podcast in the world. Shout out to everybody in no the competition. If it is, I don't see that shit, man. We out. Larry Bell, episode 176. No, 177. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God I don't look like what I've been through It's so much on my mind, it is heavy on my mantle All these niggas hurt me, I know they didn't mean to I know they didn't mean to, I know they didn't mean to And every day I be battling these issues Yeah, yeah, so many issues You don't know the half of all the things I've been through Don't know what I've been through